Um, so I came back to the good old U.S. of A. Had a little contraband, if you know what I mean. I ain't talking drugs, man. I'm talking about, uh, you know, uh, that fucking cigar habit got me again when I was over there. Those motherfuckers. And next thing you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, you go through fucking duty free. Next thing you know, you're down the street buying a humidor. And there it sits. There it sits. Laughing at me, all shiny. Oh, God damn you, Bill. You're such a weak son of a bitch. Um, but when I got home, aside from a month of mail, what I had, I ordered two books when I was over there, and I was excited. One of them, it's going to kill me, because this guy is such an underrated drummer, like, I've never even heard the proper pronunciation of his name. So I, I forgive me if I fuck this. I'm going to fuck it up, because I'm going to say it two different ways. Modal? Modal? Modal. You see, the, the Billy Squire drummer. Is it Bobby? Is it Chouinard or Chouinard? I don't know what, but uh, he had a book, The Story of the Bobby, uh, Bobby, mm-hmm, Chouinard, Chouinard story, drummer extraordinaire, and I'm reading through that, and uh, it's just a fucking great story, and uh, killer drummer, and uh, it's just, you know, it's got his modern drummer article in there, it's got all his killer fucking Ludwig drum kits, it's got all these interviews with all these guys, fucking Steve Smith, and all these, these guys from the, the whole Boston music scene and all these clubs that they played. I remember back in the day when I'd be listening to WBCN, the Rock of Boston. They'd be like, oh, go check out fucking so-and-so down at the channel or at the TAM or the Middle Eastern Tavern, the Paradise and all that shit. And I remember thinking, someday I'm going to go down there and I'm going to play drums. And you know what? It never happened. But, you know, dreams die, and uh, you get older, and uh, you learn to accept things that, you know, the, 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 the simple things in life, you know? A little bit of apple cider as you watch the sun going down on your nine-year-old Prius, you know? Those things. You, you learn to appreciate those things, you know? You're like, you know what? There's a lot of people out there that, that they, 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 they would kill to have that dream. You know, not in this country. It's kind of hard when the people you're surrounded with, that's not their dream. It's kind of hard when they're laughing at that dream, Sure. That gets difficult, but if you could somehow transport that nine-year-old Prius to some of the poorest parts on earth, why, they would look at you like a king, and that's what you have to hold on to. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just energing my way through this fucking thing. So then I went on this fucking, this, this, this whole thing on WBCN. Like, I'm fucking looking up every article I can find. I ended up watching the last broadcast of, of WBCN. I didn't know it came out in 1968. I was born in 68. And for the first 41 years of my life, that fucking radio station was on the air. You know, they helped out Aerosmith. They helped up all these fucking bands. David Bowie, all these guys. They, all these pictures, Frank Zappa, all these guys coming to the station. And I was like, I need to know more about this shit. Next thing you know, I'm buying a book on it. See, I used to be in, uh, I used to be in trucking. I didn't drive a truck. I unloaded the truck. That's what I did. I used to work in warehousing. I liked warehousing. Why? Because I didn't have a desk and there was a giant square footage area that if long, as long as I was within it, I was considered doing my job. There wasn't somebody <laughs> breathing down my fucking throat, you know, my neck, I should say, my throat. That was weird. Down my fucking neck is I, I'm supposed to be doing the spreadsheets or whatever it is. Those fucking poor people who sit in cubicles. You ever just, you ever just, see, you ever just, you ever just walk by that maze of fucking cubicles, you know? If I was, if I worked in there every Halloween, you'd have to dress, dress up like Jack Nicholson in The Shining and just limp your way through all of them with an axe going, Wendy! Wendy! I, <laughs> like fake icicles on your nose. You couldn't do that. Some, somebody would blow a rape whistle or they, they, would, they would somehow feel it was sexist because how come a woman couldn't dress up? Why was he chasing a woman? You know, all the fun of it would be immediately taken away by human resources. One fucking, one little fucking little do 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 call to human resources. You know, it would just all go away. The whole thing would go away. And then what? You'd go right back to the soul-crushing silence of 148 adults sitting in a maze of cubicles, wondering, praying, hoping for someday their dream to come walking through that door and get them the fuck out of that office. But until then, continue on with your spreadsheets. So I used to work out in the, uh, used to work out in the warehouse, unloading amp trucks, 
You know, UPS driver, the FedEx driver, you know, half those guys would show up. They gave themselves their own tattoos for whatever fucking reason. All of them. Every fucking one of them had something in common. Was that they didn't want to work for somebody else, but they were too dumb to start their own fucking business. So what do you do? You get into trucking. I'll work for you, buddy, but you ain't going to see me for days. You understand? You don't know. Am I at this Crackle Bear? Am I over there at a Denny's? Am I on the side of the fucking highway porn shop? You got no fucking idea. And as long as I bring that truckload of Q-tips in by Thursday, 9 a.m., I'm getting paid. Don't Don't matter what the fuck I did for the last three fucking days. And I always related to those guys. I saw it. There was, there was a freedom, yet you had stability. Okay? I'm getting a check every fucking week, but I don't got some cunt breathing down my neck. Unless you work for UPS. UPS was a motherfucker. They always had that fucking ride-along douche. The ice cube of UPS, right? And then you were the, the Kevin Hart character driving the fucking thing as he was reading you the riot act. Well, I guess in those movies, ice cube always drives. But you know what I mean. The hard ass, and then you were like the... Uh, the, the, the chicken police academy. Don't move, dirt bag. Right? You were the fucking scared person. When they would come along and they'd write you up every time you didn't fucking put on your blinker. Your fucking blinker. Right? If you took the turn too sharp and all of that bullshit. So anyways, so I went down this fucking rabbit hole and I ended up buying this book on uh, WBCN that's just coming out. So, so when, oh, I know what I was going to say. So when I used to fucking work, <laughs> brain is all over the place. When I used to work in the warehouse, I... Um, I used to fucking, we used to listen to that every fucking day. Charles Lockwoodera, the big mattress. And then the lunchtime song, you know, would come on and it'd be like whatever the fucking hits were that day where they would just put lunch in it. And then Mark Parento would come on at 3 p.m. And then you knew it was almost the end of the fucking day. And he was like the coolest guy. He was like the rock star of the whole fucking thing. And I know he had some extracurricular activities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the man on the air. The man on the air was a fucking rock star for three to six. It was the fucking greatest because he was the coolest guy. And then you knew that the day was almost fucking over. Right. And you knew those guys were all doing fucking blow and they were drinking. It made you feel the oh, I do is drink. These guys are doing blow at work. Why can't I get drunk on the forklift? They had that sort of influence on people in Boston. No, I'm kidding. They actually, when I was watching, um, I think Bradley J was the guy who did the last. I watched so many of them and I was fucking jet lagged. I think he did the last shift on WBCN. And they were talking about all the all the bands that they broke, all the stuff that they did, and they were saying all the fun, all the fun um stuff they did for charity. And they started talking about how WBCN had their own softball team called the the BCN Ballbusters. And I was immediately like, no fucking way. I went to one of those events and they go, yeah, one time we played this one band, but blah, 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 blah. And then, then because there was another time we played this band and, and I was, and they said Huey Lewis in the news. And I was like, I was at that thing screaming at my computer in Italy going, I fucking went to that. Right. And they were like, yeah, where did we, we did that in like fucking Marblehead. And I was like, and I was screaming at the computer. Like they could hear me. I was like, no, it was at Nickerson field in fucking in, in, at Boston university. I believe when they still had a football program and I went to that. I remember Huey Lewis pitched. I remember their bass player. He showed up dressed like he was going on stage. He had a long leather coat and he had like the number four and then like tape on the back of his coat. He had a cigarette going. He was fucking hilarious. And everybody was rooting for Huey Lewis and the news except for me and my buddy. And we were heckling him. You know, everybody, you know, was rooting for them because they were the rock stars. They weren't rooting for the fucking hometown, right? Bunch of fucking dick riders. And we were sitting there. I mean, we had a couple, two, three. Huey, you're going to lose. You got nothing. Right? <laughs> Everybody's staring at us. Um, so anyway, so I bought a book on that. And, um, and that's it. And I, think, I don't think I have anything else to fucking say. And I still got 14 minutes left. So this is, this is where it becomes a quagmire. 